Hey, this is Adam Fisher, and in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to build a web banner animation with ActionScript 3.0 that allows us to actually click a button that will send us out to a website for internet marketing needs. And I'm going to show you how to take that ActionScript 3.0 and convert it to HTML5 compatibility for the most recent internet updates. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to click on ActionScript 3.0 in Flash. Open up a new stage, and at this point in time, what I want to do is just go to File, Open. I want to open up this little setup that I have just to kind of show you uh, what we're going to be actually building out, but at the same time, I'm going to actually show you how I got to this point. Um, if you're noticing in my setup, I've got this nice image. Uh, I have a button uh, image that I'm actually going to convert into a button for setting up the, uh, the linking out to the website. And then I have this little uh, sale command going on. Um, in addition, I have four layers. I've got background, image, type, and button. So let's go ahead and uh, build this out. So first off, in my scene, I want to go ahead and rename layer to background. And the next one I believe I had was yep, image. So I'm going to click on the little icon here, the new layer. And I'm going to double click and name, name this uh, image. And then I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to name this one type. And then I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to name this one button. Perfect. Okay, looking at the web banner aspect ratio specifications here. Uh, these are the most commonly used right now. Uh, the leaderboard 728 by 90 is uh, very often used in addition to the skyscraper 120 by 600. Click the pop under 720 by 300. This one's used for movie advertising, so new movies that are about to be released and come out. This one is extremely popular for that. But all these are very frequently used right now throughout the internet, and uh, you'll find them across various and uh, multiple websites. For this lesson, I'm going to do the pop under the 720 by 300. So in Flash, once you set up your uh, new document here with your layers, I'm going to basically left click in the dark gray area outside stage in order to activate properties and make sure you're under the properties menu here. And under these properties, if you're noticing, I have the size specification. So I'm going to match that size specification to 720 by 300. I'm going to left click to open up the box. I'm going to type in 720 by 300. Hit enter, lock them in, perfect. All right, look at our scene here. I have this nice image for advertising, so I'm going to actually um, import that at this point in time. And uh, if you remember what we learned prior, you basically get a file, import, and I'm going to import to library. I'm going to track it down. Notice I have it called gap image here and click OK. Open. And then I actually have to click on the library tab, and you notice that it's now in our project. So background layer first, let's go ahead and select it. And on the background layer, I want to create this random rectangle that's going to be used for the uh, stop command. So have that layer selected, go over to rectangle, make sure rectangle tool is selected. I'm just going to do a random black here. And I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to create this rectangle that's going to go outside my aspect ratio. Because it's going to be used as a stop command object, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to lock that down. I'm actually going to turn that off too so I can see my original stage. I'm going to select the image layer and I'm going to use the selection tool. I'm going to select this image, click and drag, and drop it on stage. And you're noticing this image does not actually uh, match up to my aspect ratio specifications. That's an easy fix. I can click the transform tool and I can hold shift and just click and drag one of the corners, stretch it out. And then I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard just to kind of move it around. At any time, if I want, I can just turn this off and turn it back on and make sure it is actually fitting exact how I want it to my stage. I want to move it over just a little bit more. Perfect. All right, I'm going to lock that down. Go back to my setup project here. It's like I got a click here icon which is going to become a button 
for us to for the viewer to click on and send out to another website that is on the actual button layer and then I've got a type layer which is our command so it says sale at the gap this weekend 50% off let's go ahead and do that first so I'm going to select my type layer and on that layer I want to build my command so I'm going to click on the text tool I'm going to make sure it's the color I want I'm going to go with black and then in order to create type in flash, you have to click and drag to create a type box. And then I'm going to type in sell at the gap this weekend, 50% off everything. So I'll type in sell at the gap this weekend, 50% off everything. All right, now if your text drops down to another line by accident, with the text tool still open, you can just hover the little control handles here, click and drag, stretch it out, and you'll notice that it fits to what you're looking for. I can use it for the other side too. Punch it in. I'll go ahead and grab the selectional tool, locks it in, and with, even with the selection tool activated, you can do the same thing. I can just hover over the little control handles, drag them in, and notice how it modifies it. Okay, perfect. I'll make sure this is actually going to fit my selected area here. Let's see. I probably need to scale this down a little bit. In order to do so, we can do one or two things. I can double click, get back in my text, click and drag, and just select all my text and bring the font size down a little bit. Or I can actually have the selectional tool activated, move it around a little bit, then grab the transform tool, hold shift. And click and drag one of the corners and it just kind of scales it down. Nice. There we go. Now I'm a big fan of using what's called impact text. So if I double click, get back inside there, click and drag and highlight all this. Under the uh, properties tab, you're noticing with that selected, I have my font family here. I like using impact. That's one of my favorites. And you can modify the size further. The format, I'm using center. You got spacing margins and all kinds of things. All right, I'm going to go in and create my button now. So select the button layer in order to do that. Right. If you're noticing my setup example here, I've got this rectangle with the click here. So on the button layer, I'm going to select rectangle, choose the color I want first, save that dark blue. I'm going to click and drag it out. And then after doing that, I'm going to grab the type tool. Again, select the color I want. Hold it from properties this time, same applies. Click and drag, create a text box, type in, click here. It dropped down, so I'll hover over the edge, drag it out. Grab the selection tool, perfect, transform tool, hold shift, click and drag one of the corners, scale it down, drop it into place. That looks really good just like my setup. Perfect. I'll close this out because now we're all back to square one how we want it. Alright, at this point in time, let's see, I'm going to unlock my layers. I'll go ahead and file save this as example. Banner. Alright. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to build the timeline with the animation that we want. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to add frames to all of this timeline for these layers. So I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to go out to, let's say, frame 60. We'll do a really quick and fun little web banner animation here. Select the frames I want, and then I'm going to right click. I'm going to say insert frame. And now that should have added frames to all of our layers. Perfect. Just kind of what we learned prior. And the next thing I'm going to do is actually going to select the button layer, which is this will become our button, a clickable navigational button that's going to send us out to the website. With that selected, it highlights everything. I'll grab the selectional tool. Notice that right now it's just text and a rectangle. So I'm going to click, drag, and select everything on that layer. If you have to, you can lock the other layers, so only that is selectable. Works out pretty well. 
And then I'm going to go to Modify, Convert to Symbol. And we want this to be type, not a movie clip, but we want it to be a button. I'm going to name this button and click here. Make sure registration points at zero, center, click OK. And now you notice in your library tab, it's come over. Click here. All right. And on this layer, I'm basically just going to click, drag, and drop this into place. Put it somewhere within our ad. This looks pretty good right here. Let's rearrange a few things here. I'm going to unlock my layers. Let's see, sail at the gap. Move it kind of up. Let's get our button positioned correctly. There we go. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to grab the text. I need to actually, and I need to actually make this into a movie clip. Because I want this to be animated. Anything that's animated has to be a movie clip in Flash. I'm going to have this text actually slide in and end up right here. So with that layer selected, again, I can lock my other layers to avoid selecting any other elements in my scene. And with that selected, I'll go to Modify, Convert to Symbol. I change this to a movie clip. I'm going to name this Text Animation. That sounds pretty good. Registration points at center zero click ok and now my text animation movie clip is created it's on stage what i'll do is let's say at frame one i want it outside my scene so at keyframe one for that layer i'll grab the transform tool click and drag and if i hold shift i can move parallel place it outside and then let's say at frame 30 it slides in neat little animation I'll select 30, I'll right click, insert keyframe, and then I'll click and drag and hold shift and move it into my scene here. That means everything from 29 to 1, the text is in place here, outside the aspect ratio, outside frame, until it gets to 30, it jumps. I'll then click and drag across all my frame range, release my click, have that area selected, all those frames, right click, and say create classic tween. Move my playhead forward from one, and now you notice that all the frames in between have become animated. Understand how to do that little slide. Perfect. We'll call that our animation. Okay, perfect. So at this point in time, let's do the breakdown. This is my button, which the viewer will click on and we'll navigate out to a website that basically represents what this animated banner is advertising. Let's look at the action script. Here's the action script. If you look at the code below, import flash events. Here's the instance name. It is an event listener. Here's the function. And if you notice, here is the web address. Most importantly about this action script is it ends with a closing bracket. I want to make sure that I'm clicking and dragging to highlight all the code even from the bracket. I've had many students in the past, they fail to recognize the bracket. Click and drag from import to bracket. I'm going to go control C or I can right click and go copy. And in Flash, I want to actually paste this action script onto the keyframe. So if I select the very first keyframe for button on the frame one, I'm going to go to Window, Actions. And inside the Actions menu, I'm going to left click and make sure the cursor is flashing. Go Control V or right click and go to Paste. And I'll paste in the action script. If you're noticing, it appears just like this. It's a little color coordinated. So I've got the web address being green. I've got the uh, event listener as blue, flash events as blue, import as purple, and function as purple. Most importantly is the instance name, which is right here, button 1. If you're looking right here on the layer, the keyframe now has a little A, and that represents that actions or an action script has been applied to that keyframe for that layer. Go left click on the keyframe, make sure we got it activated. I'm actually going to left click now on the object that's on stage. I want to left click and make sure this object selected. If I click on the object, you're going to notice that under the properties tab, there's an instance name. 
I'm going to go back into my actions. I'll left click. If you accidentally closed out your action window, remember, highlight that keyframe. Just select the keyframe. Go Window, Actions, get back in there. Left click and drag, button 1. I'm going to go Control C, or I can right click and go Copy. I'm going to left click on the button on stage. Under its properties, you notice know, instant name, I'm going to left click. Now I'm going to go Control V or right click and paste. And paste in its instance name. It has to have an instance name that corresponds to the action script. Close this out. All right, now for the stop command. Running a stop command is very simple. It's just this code right here. However, in Flash, let's set it up first. Background. If you can recall, we created a background rectangle that's going to be used to run the stop command. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll to frame 60. I'm going to select the very last frame of the background layer, right click and insert a keyframe. Once the keyframe is added, I'm going to go to Window, Actions, and inside the Actions menu, I'm going to click drag and select Stop, Open Close Parentheses, Semicolon, Control C or right click and go to Copy. Back in Flash in the Actions menu, left click with the cursor flashing, go Control V or right click and paste. And now I'll run a stop command on the very last keyframe of the background layer. Close out Actions. And that completes the Action Script 3 setup process. In order to test our web banner animation, I can go to File, Publish Settings. Inside here, I want to make sure my JPEG quality is 100. We're going to make sure that we have Flash checked. You don't need to have other formats checked. These are really not needed. Make sure Flash SWF is checked. Click on the little folder icon. When you find the place you want to save it out to, name it accordingly. Hit Save. In order for the button to work, you're going to have to switch from local files only to access network only. You must make sure you make this change in order for the action script to actually work. And then basically all you got to do is just click publish. It's that fast because it compresses it to kilobytes in your submenu. Just click OK. And now you should be able to locate inside that folder where you sent it out to. It looks just like this. Named how you named it. It's an SWF movie. And the icon looks like this, a little flash icon. Again, it's an SWF. Plays in the Shockwave player. That's what SWF stands for. Double click it, open it up. It should run. Perfect. But when I click the button, notice that it does not shoot us out to the web page. Back in Flash, we've actually got to have the action script send out to the web page. So I'm going to left click on the first keyframe where we actually added our first actions for the button. Go to Window, Actions, and you're noticing that it's looking for a web address that we have not placed in yet. Here is the GAP website. I'm going to select the URL. Back in Flash, in that Actions, I'm going to make sure a web address says. Now you got to make sure that when you paste this, you paste it between the quotations. I've had students, they pasted it over the quotations and it did not work. So make sure you're pasting the web address between the quotes in the active script. Select the name web address, right click, paste to do an override. We want to go out to HTTP, forward slash, forward slash, www.gap.com, and in forward slash. You must make sure that HTTP is within that URL address that's been pasted in there. Close out your actions. Go to File, Publish Settings. And in here, we're going to make sure that we're going out to the same location. We'll do an override. Replace it yes. JPEG's at 100. And we're also going to make sure that the local playback security is changed to access network only in order for this to work. Click Publish. Click OK. Locate it where we saved it out to. Double click. Web banner. 
left click the button and it should send us out to the website and there we go all right now we're going to convert this animated banner to html5 compatibility first thing we need to do is learn about what html5 cannot include for animation purposes Look at our directions here. I have written things you cannot use for HTML5 web banner conversion. One are bitmap images. Any images you find online, make sure they're saved as a JPEG. Do not import bitmap images. Two, motion tween animation. What does this mean? Up to this point, we've been learning classic tween animation. So for motion tween, it works a little bit differently. I'm going to go to File, New, and just grab ActionScript 3.0. And inside this menu, like we learned before, I'm going to name a layer ball animation. On that layer, I'm going to grab an oval. I'm going to select what color I want. Hold shift, left click and drag, create a ball across my stage here. As soon as I do that, I'm going to grab my selectional tool, make sure my object is selected, go to modify, convert to symbol. I'm going to name this ball. And make sure it is a movie clip because we want to be an animated item and the registration point is at the center. Click OK. In the library menu it should come up. I'm going to left click and drag from frame 2 forward as many frames as I want for my frame range. I'm going to end at 60 in, for this example. Select my frames, right click, and go to insert frame. At this point in time, Notice that we do not have an ending keyframe. That's perfect. The first thing you do, unlike classic tween, where we selected the frame we wanted to end with and then keyframe, we don't have to do that in this case. All you got to do is right click on your frame range and select Create Motion Tween. Once Motion Tween is activated, you notice that it changes to a lighter blue shade. Select your object at frame 1. Move your playhead forward, let's say to frame 60. And at frame 60, with your object selected, using the transform tool, all you gotta do is left click and drag and hold shift if you want to move parallel, release it, and notice the keyframe has been made. That's motion tween. The cool part about motion tween, unlike classic tween, is at frame 30, let's say, I wanted my object or my ball here, in this case, to move downward. Use the selectional tool and just left click and drag it down at frame 30, and notice that. The motion tween has already been updated without even having a keyframe. Another really cool thing about motion tween is with the selection tool activated, I just kind of hover over the path. Notice it turns into a little curve selection tool and then click and drag. I can bend this path to how I want and do further modifications. So now this ball has a little bit of a swoosh pattern. At frame 60, I can say, have it selected without even having to keyframe. Use the transform tool, hold shift, click and drag one of the corners. You can make it bigger, hence I can maybe position it right about here. And now it looks like it's coming actually more into the foreground. This is motion tween. This is how motion tween works. The only disadvantage is it does not work for HTML5 properties. So we cannot use this animation or this type of animation and animation setup when we're doing HTML5 conversion for a web banner. But at least you know how motion tween animation works. I want to close this out and I don't want to save it. So we cannot use motion tween animation. We can only use the classic tween animation, which is what we have set up here for the web banner. And large button encompassing the entire resolution with the 0% alpha. What does that mean exactly? Well, I've had students in the past use this trick many, many times, but it does not work for HTML5. Let's go ahead and take this action script just to show you an example of what I'm talking about. Click, drag, select this action script. I'm going to go ahead and delete my button layer, create a new layer, name it button. And I can grab this rectangle tool, click, drag, and cover the entire stage. Have that rectangle selected. 
modify, convert to symbol, create as a button, name it button click, click OK. And then once that button's clicked and created, under properties, remember, there has to be a button, one instance name, and the action script has to go in frame one. There's my action. Same setup process. The really neat part is I can make this entire button the size of the ad. Yeah, you can't see what's underneath it just yet, but if you go to properties, you'll notice that underneath the color effect, there's an alpha setting. You gotta lower this alpha to zero. The button's created, it shows through, and the entire ad is a click area. However, for HTML5 purposes, this cannot be created. There has to be a button to click on. Okay, so now that you understand what we cannot use for HTML5 and what we cannot use for this lesson, but these are some neat tricks. If you were actually creating a web animated banner for advertising and you didn't need it to be HTML5, you can use these tricks to your advantage. Back in Flash. Now that everything is set up properly and you understand what we can and cannot use for HTML5, this setup is exactly what you can use for HTML5 purposes before we do the conversion process. To convert to HTML5, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to Command, Convert to Other Document Formats, and inside the submenu, HTML5 Canvas, click the Browse tab. Let's go ahead and rename it. Web Banner HTML5. Click Save. And then click OK. Once the conversion process happens, you should see a little successful message that appears at the bottom in your Output tab. Go back and click at Timeline tab and roll out what we've already created prior. If you click on the keyframe with the actions that we created and added to and go to Window, Actions, you're going to notice that the actions now have been grayed out. This means we have to actually re-add the action script, but re-add it as HTML5. To do this, select the keyframe where the actions were placed, go to Window, and we're going to use what's called Code Snippets. So you click on the Code Snippets menu. Learning this menu, you're going to notice not Action Script folder, but the HTML5 Canvas folder. I'm going to click on the drop down arrow and roll out what's called Actions. And underneath that folder, which is under the HTML5 Canvas folder, you go to double click, click to go to Web Page. Once that's added, you're going to notice that the new HTML5 version of the Action Script 3 has been updated. Again, we have to add the HTTP URL link. So we're going to go out to the GAP website. We'll see, we'll right click, copy, and then flash. I'm going to change the HTTP all the way to the ending quotation between the quotes. We're even going to delete out the blank section and paste in the GAP. So you want to paste it between the quotes. Close that out. Close this out. Again, make sure that your button on stage still has this instance name, which is button 1. Okay, now running the HTML5 stop command. The background layer, if you remember, contained the stop command. If we select this keyframe, go to Window Actions, we're notice it's been grayed out. To fix this, again, have that keyframe selected, go to Window, Code Snippets, HTML5 folder, timeline navigation, stop at this frame, double click, and now the HTML5 version, this dot stop, open close parenthesis semicolon, has been added, which is the HTML5 version of the ActionScript command. Close it out. You're noticing that the new ActionScript has been added and replaced under an actions layer. This is perfect. Close out your code snippets panel everything. We have already created a new FLA document. Remember, this is our old one, which is the ActionScript 3.0 that we can always go back into.
but Flash has already created a whole other Flash file with now the HTML5. Go to File, Save, and then you can go to File, Public Settings, click the little folder, send out where we've been sending out the ActionScript 3.0. I'm going to make sure the name is named accordingly. Click Save. We don't need the JPEG image or the SVG image. Just make sure JavaScript HTML is selected. All you got to do here is click Publish. Click OK. It's been sent out in Flash. If you want to at any time, you go to Control Test. And you're noticing, here it is. And if I click on the button, it sends us to the website. Back in your folder, it will appear like this. This is the JavaScript file itself that you would send over or outsource to actual web designers. They'd open this up. This is a this would open up in Dreamweaver. They could open this up, copy paste the JavaScript code, and put it into the actual web page. So that's for web designers. If you want to see your design as an actual web page, that is the HTML document. Chrome HTML document, whatever your browser is, double click it, it'll come up as an actual web page. You'll see it animated. If you click the button here, again, it sends us out to the website. Keep in mind that you can uh, go to my LinkedIn page at linkedin.com if you would like to uh, link up with me and uh, have me as a uh, resource and a reference in your uh, list of contacts. You can uh, send me a message at my LinkedIn, and uh, that will reach out to my Yahoo email, uh, hence my uh, Gmail accounts, and uh, I can always be there to help you. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, look forward to working with you.